Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. Before we get started with today's video, I want to thank everybody. We've reached 17,700 subscribers, and that is just awesome to me. Also, you can become a member to the EBA Central channel now for just 99 cents. And I wanted to let you know that the MVP, VIP, and Pro at the 1st of 2023 will be going away and all those perks will be transferring to the eBuzz Central member right here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's a good way to support your channel and support the content that you like. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now today, we're going to be looking at a little bit different looking distro. Uh, I like it because of the choices it gives you to install software. As a matter of fact, let's just get on over to the website. And that is Oruk Linux. Uh, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right. They actually... Oruk. So Oruk Linux, I'll do my best. Generally, I mess things up, especially with pronunciation. So I'll give it my best shot. But Oruk Linux, I'll be sure to link this website in the description below. But it's a fully free, simple, lightweight GNU Linux operating system for home users and small enterprise and educational centers with 100% privacy. And then you come down here, it uses the Linux Libre kernel. It comes ready for home or office use. And programs are easy to find to install. And it's basically right now based on the Pure OS core. And then they give you a little audio file to let you know how it's pronounced. And then down here it says, why using your Rook? It's 100% free, which is pretty much general across the board with all Linux distributions. Full control. Uh, it offers simple, user-friendly graphic interface. Uh, simple. It ships with the most common software for popular computing tasks. You can install RPM packages on this. You just go into the terminal, you type U-RPMI, and then the name of the package, and it will install from there. Now, it does come with Synaptic as well, so there's many different ways to install software on here. And you can install software from source. Just type in the terminal U-SRC, followed by the file you want to build, so you can install from source there. And over here, they have the package manager simulator. You can simulate popular package manager commands right there in the system. So you can pretty much get applications from anywhere you want to. Oruk Docker, we have a Docker image for Oruk GNU Linux. You can use it by installing the Docker and then typing this right here and then get involved. You can share it with your friends, reporting issues, suggesting improvements, helping in forums, writing and translating documentation and or applications, designing, develop software for Oruk. So... Let's go back to the top. We've got home, about, features, docker, get involved, contact, download, blog, and bug reports. If you click on download, it just brings you down here, and it comes in the Mate edition. So what I'm going to do right now, without any further ado, is go ahead and let's get over to the desktop. And if you download a Rook, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Now, I do want to let you know I tried to open it in GNOME boxes, and it would boot. It seemed like it took a little longer to boot than it does in VirtualBox. And when I tried to get the resolution correct, it would sit to the screen just fine, but the little Mate dock would stay up here in the center of the screen. So I tried it in VirtualBox. It booted right up. So I'll, I'll fight with it in GNOME boxes later. But I did want to let you know if you want to run it, it's probably going to have a better performance inside of VirtualBox. And as you can see, this is the Mate desktop. you got the single panel up top up here. And then, of course, you got the little dock down here. You've got date and time, battery power, internet connection, sound, Bluetooth, and then virtual desktops. And then your application menu right there. And then you come back down to the bottom. you got the Sayonara player, which is an audio player for the system. And when that pops up, you can pretty much point it to whatever directory your music is in and use it. I like the look of the player. But that's definitely something to take a look at if you decide to give Oruk a shot. Let's go ahead and close that. And then right here, you can install it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the installer real quick. And when that pops up, it just says, Welcome to Oruk Linux 3.0. This program will ask you some questions. And it's going to give you a lot of the same things you get with a lot of other installers. Yes, United States. It'll ask me where I want to be. I can go up here. You can change that around if you wanted to. Set your keyboard. Name, computer name, pick user, choose password, and then, of course, click Next, and you'd be able to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of that. Yes, I want to quit. And you have LibreOffice. Then we have Mate Terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. Man, they don't. Let's go with Top. 
Let's maximize that. Make it a little bigger to see. And right now, out of the three gigs I have issued to this machine, it's using about 664 megs to be open at rest, which isn't too bad. It's about 200 lighter than a KDE or a GNOME, so that's definitely, if you're looking for something probably in between an XFCE and an LXQT and a GNOME or a KDE, Mate falls right in that pocket right there. So if that's something you're looking for, that's something for you to take a note of. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Thunderbird for your mail. Let's go ahead and open up the file manager, which is Kaja. And Kaja is pretty nice. Uh, it's not as light as, say, like a Thunar, but not as feature-rich as a Dolphin. You've got your usual suspects over here, and you've got your home folders right here. It pretty much just lets you get your work done, stays out of your way, but then gives you a few more functions than its lighter counterparts. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, you've got Firefox as your web browser. Now, if we come up top here, let's go to the menu. First thing I want to cover before we look at any applications is the control center. Let's go ahead and open that up and let's maximize it. Right here is pretty much your main settings panel where you're going to control everything on your system. You've got your greeter settings, print settings, synaptic package manager. This is what I was telling you. There's a lot of different ways to install software on this operating system. Now, if we close here, Synaptic, I'm not going to go crazy in-depth with it because you guys have seen me cover it in videos. But if you've never seen me cover it, it's a type search install program. You would just come up here and let's say you wanted to do a search. You could put in something like Caden Live, let it go out there and search for it. When it brings it up, you just want to click on that box, mark for installation. Here are all the dependencies that are required for it. You would mark those as well. Once it's marked, you just come up here, click apply, and you've installed the application. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Quit. You've got Bluetooth manager, displays, power management, firewall config, appearance, main menu, Mate tweaks, screensaver, Uruk welcome. Let's go ahead and open that up because that did not pop up on boot. So you got a welcome screen here. It's 3.0. It lets you know what edition you're running and you're running kernel 5.15.79 GNU. So this is a Linux Libre kernel. You've got your hardware right here, apps, forums, getting involved, bug report, control center we were just looking at, update system, and FSF and GNU. So that's a nice little welcome screen. It does say show this dialog at startup. Maybe I just didn't wait long enough for it to pop up. So we'll close out of that. Onboard settings, preferred, screensaver, startup apps, and Windows. And then if you go down through here, it just breaks these down. Hardware, there's your hardware, internet, look and feel, change theme. Now, if you change theme, it should open up a whole separate window. There it is. Let's close out of that and then set preferred applications. So let's go ahead and just close out of this. And then when you go back up to the app menu, you've got all. Let's just go through all. You've got advanced network, appearance, caffeine. Caffeine's pretty nice to have, especially if you're utilizing your laptop and you got to get work done and you don't want it to go to sleep. Decomp editor, Kaja we've already looked at. Then you've got the GW package manager, another way to install software on this system. Genie, GIMP, Image Magic, install Uruk, LibreOffice Suite, Mate Menu, Mate Fonts. Password and keys, personal file sharing, Pluma, Plank, Power Management, Sayonara, Startup App, Synaptic, Take Screenshot, Uruk, Update Manager, USB, VLC, Window Management, and then of course Lock, Power Off, Power On. Let's do a right click. Let's see if we can change this desktop background, see what kind of choices we might have. Those pop up. So I guess we could just go in here and pick us out one like that and it would pop up on the screen. That's pretty nice. What if we went something with a little bit more color? Or something like that. I like that. We'll leave that up there. So that's just a quick look at Rook Linux. It seems pretty nice, guys. Especially, I'm gonna play around with it today on some bare metal using the different forms and different ways of installing software. But I mean, if you can install from Synaptic Package Manager, GDB, RPM, there are so many different ways to install applications on here. I like it. Now, a lot of people blow up in my comments and go, that's the problem with Linux. There's way too many package managers. Why don't we just settle on one and be happy with it? I like choice, guys. I like to be able to go three or four different routes to install software and applications. 
That's my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, please leave it in the comments below. So what do you think of a Rook Linux? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine, take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation. Or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.